Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and iPadOS 17 Beta 1 was released to developers the other day, along with iOS 17 Beta 1, WatchOS 10 Beta 1, and other updates as well. And so I thought we'd cover all of the new features and changes, and the public beta will be available in July. Now, as far as supported devices, Apple is dropping support for quite a few different devices. So iPadOS 17 is supported on iPad Pro 2nd generation and later, iPad Air 3rd generation and later, iPad 6th generation and later, and iPad Mini 5th generation and later. So if you have an iPad Pro 1st generation, it's no longer supported, unfortunately. Now, this particular update came in at 3.03 gigabytes. That's on an M2 iPad Pro 12.9 inch. It will vary depending on what device you're actually installing this on and what update you're coming from. I was on the iPadOS 16.6 betas prior to this update. Now, this has a lot of new features in it, but I'm only going to cover iPad specific features. I covered a bunch of different updates with the iOS 17 beta one is out video, and there's changes to things such as messages, Safari, mail, music, and much, much more. But I wanted to cover specific iPad features that are not in iOS 17. Now, the first thing has to do with the lock screen. If we go to the lock screen, there's now personalization of the lock screen. Just like iOS 16 and iOS 17, press and hold on the lock screen and you can add a different personalized lock screen. If we go over and add one, you'll see we have a bunch of different categories with different things such as weather and astronomy, kaleidoscope, emoji, unity, pride, collection. And under collection, we have the new wallpaper for iPadOS. And also we have a new hello wallpaper, similar to what we have on Mac with different styles and more. So if you want to use that, that's available as well as a nice landscape wallpaper. And if we go down, you've got some color wallpaper as well. Now, if we go into astronomy, that's new as well. And under astronomy, if we swipe, we have all of the different planets. So we'll continue to swipe through. You can see all of the different planets here as we swipe through and they've left out Pluto. Some people say it's a planet, some don't, but you'll see here, here's all of the different planets as we scroll through. It's customized for iPad. If we hit cancel, again, we have some new kaleidoscope options and you can swipe between the different styles. So you don't have to go back out and back in. Now let's go ahead and cancel this. And if we go back to this wallpaper, we can customize it again, just like iOS. So if we tap on the lock screen and tap on our options here, we have light and dark mode and automatic. So Apple's brought back light and dark mode, just like they did on iOS 17 as well. We also have the option to customize the time here. We can change the size if we want it really large and bold, or we want it super thin like iOS 17 or somewhere in between, we can do that with any of these different fonts. We also have different colors we can select from and more, and we can change it to whatever we want. So we can just leave it and have it automatically customize that or change it to whatever we like. On the left, we have a widget panel here. We can add widgets from just about anything we have in iOS as well. So if we go to weather, we can add a weather widget, the small ones, the large ones. We even have a Safari widget with reading lists and more. So you'll see here reminders, notes, and much more. So it's great that they've added that. Let's go ahead and hit done. Now we'll go to the home screen. So not only do we have our notifications here, if we go to the home screen, you'll see that we have some widgets. These widgets are now interactive, just like iOS 17. So if we wanna hit play, we can play music. If we wanna turn on lights, turn them back off, they'll actually interact directly from these widgets. And third-party developers can use these widgets as well, so they can create them for their own apps, whether that's something as simple as maybe Ring or even DaVinci Resolve. They can add those in future widget updates. Unfortunately, we cannot completely rearrange the way this looks. So we still have our icon grid and it works the exact same way. So if you wanna add a widget, press and hold, such as our battery widgets, we have those different things. And some of these are interactive, some of them are not, but it just depends on what you're looking at. So podcasts, if we pick the larger one, add the widget, again, it's fully interactive. So that part's nice, we just can't rearrange the grid altogether. Apple has also updated Stage Manager. So if we go into maybe Safari, we'll go into the Control Center, which they did not redesign, by the way, turn on Stage Manager, we can now better organize our windows how we want. We can resize them pretty much however we'd like, and then maybe we'll bring in, well, let's bring in 
let's go back. We'll bring in maybe music here and then we can resize it and move it wherever we'd like to on the display. So again, we'll bring in weather and instead of it sort of snapping to a specific location, we can stack them, we can move them all over and just tap on the one we want to have in the front. So it's much more like managing windows on a Mac instead of an iPad, much, much better that way. Also, you can use an external display. They haven't made a huge change there, but they did allow you to use third-party cameras on a studio display or just plugging them in. So let's go ahead and plug in a camera. And if we bring in a camera, this is actually the Logitech camera that goes to the Pro Display XDR. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it will work. So we'll plug it in, we'll go into FaceTime, and you can see here that it's actually working. So we can resize this window and it's using this camera. So I can cover it and you'll see we can use this camera, third-party cameras, no drivers, just plug it in, USB-C, and it seems to work. So that's great if you wanna use this instead of the iPad camera or something else. Now let's turn off Stage Manager and let's go to the next screen here. As we scroll over, you can see I just have my normal app grid, but there's a new app here, Health. Apple has added the Health app to iPadOS. So if we hit continue, it's saying our device information is secure, it's synced from iPhone, and again, notifications will allow, and you can see my health data. So I can confirm my health details here, see things such as medications, mobility, mental well-being, which is new as well, where you have emotion and moods, daylight, and much more. So these things have been added to iPadOS with all of the same sort of features that you have with iOS just brought over here. With iPadOS 17, Apple has actually updated PDF support and brought more interactivity with it to Notes. So if we go into a PDF, this is a sample PDF from Adobe. If we go here, we can press and hold. It recognizes different areas. Then you can copy, select all. And if you want to bring that into Notes, you can do that and mark it up and collaborate. So if we go into Notes and within Notes, if you're using a PDF, you can interact, show thumbnails. You can also annotate and sort of draw on top of it. You can also autofill fields now. It will recognize maybe your name and address and help you autofill that from your contacts. Additionally, you can link notes to one another and also there's some font changes and more. So a few different things that have been added to notes, nothing huge though, but the nice updates to PDFs make it easier to sort of do those on an iPad, sign those and move on. Additionally, there's some updates to Freeform. So let me find the app here wherever I've put it. And within Freeform, we now have the option for new pens. So you'll see some down here at the bottom. Let me bring that back. You have some new ones if you scroll over. And what they are is a watercolor brush, calligraphy pen, highlighter, variable pen width, and ruler. So basically the things that you had before in the Notes app are brought here. So you have that option. And additionally, it recognizes shapes. So maybe if we draw a square, it can recognize it, but you'll have to hold. So we'll hold. It recognizes a circle, same thing. We'll try the square again. It recognizes it if you hold and draws a square. The same things that we had in notes are now here. If you're collaborating with someone, there's a new follow along feature to see what someone else is changing or working on. So maybe they're on a different part of the document working on this board and they've changed something. You can see them move across the different areas within Freeform. So that's been added in this update. Now, additionally, there's all of the different updates with iOS 17 as well. So again, those interactive widgets, we have changes, changes to messages, autocorrect, and different features throughout with accessibility and more. So if we go to accessibility, you have all of those different modes with personalized voice. You can create a new one, share it across devices. We also have assistive access, which gives you sort of a larger tile view of the iPad and much more. So this update has everything from iOS 17, along with the things I've shown you here for iPadOS 17. Not a huge update, but some nice refinements. Hopefully they update this more in the future where we have a different layout here that hopefully takes advantage of the iPad display, just like watchOS 10 does with the watches. So I would love to see some updates that are specific to iPad that way. This update should release to the public in September, typically alongside the new iPhone launch and iOS 17 and all of the other updates. 
Of course, I'll have different videos about Mac OS 14, Sonoma, and much more. Be sure to check those out. And if you're wondering if you should install iPad OS 17, I would probably hold off. Although this does seem to be more stable than iOS 17, I'd probably wait for the public beta at least, or maybe a few betas in. Typically by beta two or three, they become much more stable. As far as iPadOS 17 Beta 2, that's probably a couple weeks away at the minimum, and usually Beta 2 or Beta 3 releases alongside the public beta, so I would wait for that to install it. Other than that, though, performance seems to be okay. Battery life, I'm not really sure. I've only used it for a day or so, but let me know your experience with it if you've installed it, and if you're excited about iPadOS 17, do you think they could have done more? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper that we have on the iPhone and also the iPad in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.